selected because they wanted to be entrepreneurs. And chances are, if they came from top colleges and wanted to be entrepreneurs, chances are that they had an idea of what it is that they would want to do. <laughs> At least a broad idea. Okay, let's, let's assume that they had that. In the event they didn't have it, okay, they would possibly not receive the funding. They possibly wouldn't receive the support. They possibly wouldn't set up the business plans. They possibly would not get space in that incubator. Let's assume they had all of that. What then? 80%? Yes? Or 80, 80 is the consensus? Less than 20. No, give me a figure. Come on. I mean, 20%? Possibly 20%? 90%. 90%. So rationally thinking, uh, at rationally least 70%. Thinking. Rationally At thinking. least 70%. 70, rationally. Wow, he's a rational. Man is a rational animal, but not always. <laughs> not always. You know, we are predictably irrational. And this is something that you, 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 you get to see here. Because out of the 10,000 kids, those that stayed back and wanted to continue working with their enterprises that they had set up earlier, it was about 2%. Okay, so 2%. That was, that was that, that stupefied the sponsors. You know, the president of the country almost went berserk. He said, let's understand what's happening. And uh, let's ask the UN to get involved. So the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development was summoned. Sirs, please come, understand what's happening here. Please tell us what's, what are we doing wrong? I mean, if there's anything that we can course correct with this. So the specialists came over, they studied, they understood. Uh, that there could have been something missing. And to understand this, what they did was they did a they did an experiment. And this was across 70 countries worldwide. Because the UN usually works on a very large system. It doesn't, it doesn't just pick up one or two countries and, and pick up results and learn this way. If it, if it gets into a program, it will possibly do a much wider uh, coverage because it needs a certain practical uh, uh, you know, insights that can be broad-based. So that's what the UN did. And, and the UN studied the behaviors of it. They actually got down to why is it that these people failed. So they interviewed all these kids, most of these kids, yes, who had failed. And they found that they found that they demonstrated certain you know common behaviors. That was more than what it is that they were the the, the the specific uh, thing that you mentioned a little earlier, which is the business idea, that possibly was not as important as the behaviors that they were demonstrating. Okay, so it wasn't about the idea; it was about the behavior that accompanied those ideas. And uh, and then they did a study across those, as I mentioned, as seventy countries. India also was part of that study. In, in India, the study was done in a place called Kakinad, undivided Andhra. Someone comes from Andhra. No, yes, you're not in Kapinad, yes. So it's a fairly entrepreneurial place, Kapinad. Yes, it's a nice district in, in Andhra and uh, Telangana now, right? Right, it's still in Andhra, yes, okay. And uh, they, in these places, what they looked at was successful entrepreneurs. Successful entrepreneurs, people who were deemed, or society saw them as very successful, with, you know, some standing in entrepreneurship. And they found that these people uh, who were successful in the rest of the world versus the people who had failed in the Argentinian experiment, they basically demonstrated some, it was, it was rather funny, because the competencies that they demonstrated, the, the successful people, were exactly the competencies that were missing from the, from the group that had struggled. Okay? So they found not different competencies, set of competencies, competencies or behaviors, but the same competencies and the same behaviors. But they were either being practiced and demonstrated here, in one example, and they were not being practiced and demonstrated here. So they came back to Argentina with this suggestion, all right, start this experiment all over again, but this time ensure that these behaviors are demonstrated, because it's not so much about the business, it's about the behaviors that go into the business, and these guys are demonstrating the behavior, which is why they're, they're doing well. So let's do this. So 84, 84 end to 86 was the second phase of this experiment. Again, a two 
year uh, uh, focused experiment on understanding how young people could potentially take to entrepreneurship. And this, uh, this again was funded by the government. It was a government funded program. Okay? This time, what the government did differently was, was, what do you think? What do you think? It was about the behavior, yes? They provided ideas. They... Mm. No, that's, yes. <clears throat> so you're stuck with ideas. You know, what, what they've done is they got people who would support the demonstration of these behaviors. In other words, they've got behavioral experts. Okay, people who could observe your behaviors and tell you what it is that you're demonstrating right and what it is that you're, where is it that you're lacking. So they got in specialists around behaviors because they understood that there were a set of behaviors that were being demonstrated by successful entrepreneurs. And those very specific behaviors were not being demonstrated. So what they did is they got experts, behavioral experts, and put them into that mix in addition to other technical experts around access to markets, finance, etc. So all of that was there. In addition, they got the behavioral experts. And they ran this program again from uh, 84 to 86. What do you think the success rate now was? What's to that? Because we're now at 86 now. So what do you think it moved up to? Did it move up at all or did it move up and, you know, massively or how? It was 2%, remember earlier? 20%. Huh? 20? 10 times, yes? You hazard a guess? 30 to 40%. 30 to 40%, okay. All right. 20%. 20? 20. 20. 20. 20. Then think about why you're saying what you're saying. It's very important that you reason. I'm not, I'm not going to ask each of you why, but in your mind's eye, what you should be doing is trying to understand what is it that has changed? What, what are we doing now? which we weren't doing earlier. And this is important for you to introspect. So, so 28, 30, 40, uh, no higher. Remember, it's about behaviors. And these were, again, top of class and top institutions. And now they were being coached around these behaviors. Hmm? 75. 75. All right, so good. See, all I have to do is emphasize the, the you know, a certain point. And then the, the, you know, the, the rates go up. Okay, 75, 80%. Okay, so it went up from 2% to a massive 2.5%. Okay? That's, that's where it went up. So from 2% earlier, it went to 2.5%. And so the president said it's going to now be an election issue. He's going to lose the elections because he's spending public money into this, you know, into this experiment. So he said, I'm going to cut all this down. This is hogwash. Entrepreneurship isn't, isn't going to happen. It cannot be taught. It can't happen. Right? And then he, he said to the UN, please tell, tell us, sirs, what do you think we are doing? Uh, where in this development equation are we, are we getting it wrong? Tell us, tell us now. Because we've done exactly what you asked us to do. We followed the syllabus. We looked at those behaviors. We've got specialists. We've trained people, young people, and they're now behaving in, in those ways. And, and yet, look look at the success. So this time, the UN really took it, you know, very, very, uh, you know, it was, it, was, it was a matter of, uh, it, was a, it was a matter of prestige, I guess. I'm not being recorded, no? Just, just keep me in my mind of all the reasons I wanted to stay away from that presentation. I'm, I'm going off the book, because I think this is important. Uh, in the next two or three minutes, what I'm going to share with you might change your life. Just might. Or may not. Okay? Chances are it won't. But it might. Okay, so uh, so this this is how it went. So the UN got involved and they sent some specialists. This time, uh, these specialists wanted to understand in very specific terms, of course, why is it that these people were going wrong? So they interviewed. A, a good set of these, uh, a, a good sample of the 10,000 is the phase two of the experiment. But they also interviewed, for the first time, 
the previous set that they had looked at from the 70 countries, including from Kapinan, okay? So they went back and they found out that there was something about these people that wasn't studied and it wasn't correlated to this new set. They went back and they, and they found two striking things. Striking. Okay, if you uh, perhaps not look at your smartphones and just pay a little attention here, you'll possibly remember these for a while. The first, if there's nothing that you take away from this uh, talk, it's possibly just these two things, so I'm, I'm requesting your attention. So the first thing they noticed is that 80% of these people who did very well, okay, who did really, really well, 80% of these guys, and uh, by the way, they had also interviewed uh, Dhirubhai Ambani, they had interviewed Rishai Bols in South Korea, they had interviewed some oligarchs in uh, USSR at the time. They interviewed some of those people as well. So really, really solid people. So 80% of these people, A, did not have degrees. Okay, no degrees. Okay, and the second thing they noticed is that 80% of these, the same people, 80% of these people, uh, failed on an average two and a half times in the course of their entrepreneurial journeys. Failed. Failed. As in, you know, on the, nose hits, hits the ground, that kind of failure. So uh, these two, these two uh, observations uh, were critically absent when, when they did the experiment the first time. They understood why is it that there's certain people that are successful and certain people that are not when it comes to entrepreneurship. So now the UN possibly had cracked it. Okay. They said, oh, well, you, you believe we've cracked it. We understand why is it that some entrepreneurs will see success and some will not. And they went back and they, they said to the government, hey, listen, we want, to, we want to do this the third time. And the government said, thank you very much, but no. Then we run out of funds. And the good thing is that the UN said at that time, listen, you don't need the funds. You don't need the funds, okay? So we will design it, we will fund the program. All you have to do is to just observe. Okay, so the government said, all right, let's do it. This time, they picked up some young coaches, football coaches, you know? People who were running, young people who had gone past their prime in club football. Club football is popular in Argentina. So people who had gone past their prime and who had set up some sporting academies and were training young people to become sports persons. So they picked up some of these young people. They also forgot the, the they didn't have anything to, they, they didn't want anything to do with the top, the Ivy League kind of colleges, etc. They said, we'll go to community colleges. Okay, we'll go to community colleges. We'll go to, you know, colleges that happen, at, where people go to because they want to do something in life. And not because their parents want to send them there. Okay. Sorry, did I say that? I can't imagine I said that. Did I say it? I just said it. Okay. So, uh, and, and very many of us uh, you know, have, have undergone uh, this experience, gone through a syllabus of life. So we understand what the social requirements of us are as human beings. It's very different from who we are and what we are ourselves. So that's an aside. Anyway, so that's what they got. They got these colleges, they got these uh, coaches. They brought the coaches over to Geneva. And they found that these coaches were naturally demonstrating those behaviors. Naturally. They didn't have to be taught. They didn't have to be explained. They didn't have to be curated. They didn't have to be, you know, sold these behaviors. They were naturally behaving like this because they were running their enterprises. And none of them had a safety net. None of them. They're all past the prime, uh, self made, uh, self employed. And they said to them, listen, uh, guys, why don't you go and you select some young people who will shadow you uh, doing what you do as you negotiate contracts with clubs, for example, or you neg negotiate a, a loan agreement with a banker, or you negotiate a, a new space that you're taking up, let's say, or any, of, or any of this. Let the people shadow you. So that's what they did. So these guys went back. And this was the third phase of the experiment, so 86 to 88. And they picked up again 10,000 young people, but this time from community colleges, as I mentioned earlier, and 
they were following these young coaches and the, the coaches, it was basically a gurukul system. The coaches sent them on errands, hey, ja tu ye kar kya, that kind of thing. So they, they, were, they were all, it was very disorganized. There was no syllabus. There was no specialist. There was nothing. There was no money. There was nothing. These kids had to beg, borrow, or steal uh, when it came to setting up their own enterprises. Okay? And, and 10,000 enterprises, or perhaps around that number, were set. What do you think happened? What do you think the success rate now was? So we're looking at 2% first phase, 2.5% the second. Now, what do you think? These were people with a fire in the belly, wanted to really do something. Uh, and they met those two conditions. Didn't have degrees. I mean, you know, they did have degrees. They were looking to get degrees. But it wouldn't be a, a degree from a top college. What do you think? What do you think happened? 10%. 20%. 20%. 20%. Good, good, good. Now you're conservative bankers too. But, but that's good. Five. Very nice. So that still is about 50% growth, 100% growth from previous rates. So the success rate went to 98.3%. This was recorded by the UN. 98%. Okay. And the reason it went up to those levels was because it met those conditions. It really met those conditions. And it wasn't that they were all doing superlatively, but they were on the path. So 98% of people were on a path to, uh, you know, for self-employment, and they were actually generating jobs. And that gave them a kick. That gave them a high point. Not just getting a job, but generating one. That gives you a I'm not going to be preaching to the, to the converted. Some of you are already interested in So this happened. Then the UN uh, obviously they celebrated the success of this, and then Argentina became the first country to promote this idea of emprendedore technologias. As a good friend uh, introduced the program to the the technology, the technology of entrepreneurship is not a technology that can be taught. It is not a technology that can be. Uh, conveyed, promoted <clears throat> from a teacher to a student. It is a technology that requires transmission in very, very unique ways. And uh, most of this is something that our ancient Munis and Rishis had cracked, uh, the Gurukul system. It's all about mentorship. It's about you know, getting, getting close to a system of people who would, who would do your bidding and would trust in your understanding of what is good for them. But more importantly, it was about behaviors. So, uh, and, and it had nothing to do with, uh, it had perhaps nothing to do with educational background. Perhaps not. Now, I'm going to ask you the first question here. So do you, do you relate to the story in some way? Have you seen someone who's gone through a similar experience if you are thinking of some entrepreneurs, have they gone through something like this? Are you being able to understand why phase three of the program was a resounding success? I'm just going to ask you, show of hands. Are you being able to understand why? I know, you still don't understand why. You understand why? You have some idea why it was successful, the third phase? Why? <laughs> Hunger in the belly. All right, what else? Hunger in the belly, fire in the belly, so they fire in the belly, any, all right? They yes? did not have any safety net and <clears throat> No like safety net, okay, connected. That's an idea that's connected. And what else, please? No safety net, hunger, fire in the belly. A topper from a top institution may not have that kind of fire in the belly. Why? Why? Because they already know that they might be. <laughs> They're already protected. They have a job already signed up at Goldman Sachs. Yes? So they're, they're not going to be that motivated to demonstrate something out of their skins here. Yes? Okay. Okay, I can relate to that. Now, does everyone relate to that? Almost everyone? Okay. Is there anything else? Can you think of something else? Sorry, sorry, sorry? Can you just stand up, please? I'm, I'm unable to see you. They felt it was needed for them to do beautiful. Beautiful. Can you explain that a little more? Can you tell me where this is coming from? Why, why is it that these... So you have necessity entrepreneurs versus 
entrepreneurs who do do it just for the heck of it. You know, Papa ka ek business hai, mujhe samala hai. That's but that's also necessary, isn't it? But uh, if they don't have what is a necessity? How is a necessity entrepreneur different from family business samalne wala? How how they different? Without having that, they would also would have survived. But for uh, these people in Argentina, that was their uh, main motive or main uh, path to go. And how do you think they were selected by the coaches, by the football coaches? So the football coaches went to the community colleges and selected their chelas who would shadow them as they went about their businesses. Uh, how do you think they selected these people? Their willingness of fire to learn. How do you get it? Practical terms. Can you see some here if you run a thermometer? I would mean, do a thermometer check. Uh, who's at 103 Fahrenheit? Who's at 107 Fahrenheit? Yeah. How do you do it? Discipline. Thank you. Any ideas? How do you do it? How do you find people with a fire in the belly? You say it's good to be able to have fire in the belly because these are the people who will possibly strive. How do you find people who strive? The curiosity. Curiosity. Very good. What else? And how do you measure that curiosity? How do you know? In a in a class uh, full of students here right now, how do you know who the good curious ones? Sorry? Yes, please ma'am. Dedication towards you. Say again. Dedication towards you. Dedication. How do you how do you figure? How do you figure how dedicated they are? Beautiful! Absolutely spot on. And that's exactly what they do by observing daily behavior. And you know, there are three items here. Observing. Daily, not behavior that happens once in a blue moon. You know, uh, some lecture hoda hai, UN se koi aara hai. Dekhte hai, chalte hai, dekhte hai kya hai. That's a behavior that you're demonstrating today. But what are you going to do tomorrow? What's your behavior going to be the day after? So if you're being able to demonstrate certain behaviors on a daily basis, what you've done is three things. You've moved a certain behavior, <clears throat> into a habit. Perhaps you've also moved certain habits into character over a period of time, which doesn't happen in about 10 years, 15 years. It takes time. For me, for example, it took me about 15 years uh, when I came out of the banking system and, and doing something <coughs> In the bank, what I was doing was making fat cats fatter. It didn't appeal to me. I brought in about $2.5 billion into India. Okay, but that wasn't enough. Because it just was about a few portfolio investors that I got richer. Right? That wasn't enough. So I, I, I'm doing what, I'm, what, I, what I love to do. But more importantly, more importantly, perhaps certain aspects of character building is something I'm beginning to see. So how do you move behavior to habit and habit to character? How do you get going on that journey? What do you do? How do you, how do you, how do you start? What's a good place to start? What's a good place to start? Huh? What do you think? That's why I said, you know, I'm not going to put out any presentations, no slides, no nothing. We'll just do this together. So how, where is a good place to start? Today. <laughs> All right, today. When is a good place to start today? And what would you start with? What, what's, what's important? So idea. Your, your brothers. <laughs> no? He's, he's your idea guy. Idea, ideal, ideal. Ideas. The most underrated uh, element is possibly not the idea, it's something else. Perhaps ideas are very, very overrated. You know, there are lots of people with tremendous ideas, brilliant ideas. But you lay them out and then see what happens. They just fall to the ground, they disintegrate because they don't have dash, 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 dash behind it. And those dashes are something that we'd like to fill up now. Yeah. Let's let's do this little exercise. Unless you were you wanted to call us execution with simple uh, small steps. Okay. Thank you. Yes. SWOT. All right. Can we can we promise just one little thing to ourselves? You know, I, I don't understand any management term. Let's imagine I'm dumb. I just don't. I I'm, I'm absolutely. You know, imagine I I was one of those uh, third lot guys picked up. Okay, from a community college. So I don't understand any of this. Tell me in specific terms, what do I start with? How do I, how do I begin a journey which 
uh, which entails behavior building into habit, and then habit over a period of time to carry it, sir. Getting up early. Start with a hobby, okay. Uh, give me an example. What do you do? Reading books. Reading books. Reading books. <coughs> Making your bed. It starts from within, okay. I, 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 I like what you're saying, what, I, what, how you're thinking this. You're saying it's an, in, it's an inside job. Uh, what's your name? Sayoni? Sayoni? Okay, good. Because what I'm also doing now is selecting some people for the point internship. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> so, so Saloni thinks it's about an ins it's an inside job. So it's not about motivation. It's yes, please. Would you would you please stand up, please, so I can see you better. Thank you. <coughs> Three thirty is when we come back. So we have to acknowledge our own potentials. Knowledge at. Acknowledge our own potentials. Knowledge of our own potential? Acknowledge. Acknowledge. Acknowledge our potential. Yes, sir. Acknowledge our... Help me understand. Just just unpack that for me. Acknowledge is to understand. Hmm. Okay? So use simpler words, all right? Understand what? Potential. My capability. Yes. What is it I'm capable of? Understand my capability. How do you do it before you even you're out on the road? So you're not out on the street, you're not doing anything. How do you how do you understand what you're doing? Trying and test it would mean that I've already done this. So I'm looking back at a series of experiments that I've done with myself. Here yeah, there's no experiment. Yes. So yes. often yes. people have some ideas, but they Ah, you're the sister. <laughs> Good. But they lack the belief in themselves that they yes. can do it. So once they realize their own capabilities, they'll be able to work harder on the ideas. I now know. I know for certain, you know, with this little pot belly that I have, and not going to a gym and not exercising, I now know I can get onto Everest tomorrow. I believe that I can do this. And what's going to happen is I'm going to die on my way to the, uh, the, the base camp. No? How do I get a realistic understanding of what I'm really, uh, where I really stand, what my value is at? Yes? Getting out of my comfort room. That's what you do. How do I do it? That's what you do. Great. You get out of your comfort zone. Yes, but to do what? Why do I, why do I have to jump from here to here when I can take the steps? Or the entire plane, really? Sir, willpower. Believe? The willpower to uh, take That's something that will get me to jump again. <laughs> but I can take that inclined plane, right? So I, I need, yes, you're right, I need willpower to be able to do this. But why, why would I do it? Fail and learn. Say again? Fail and learn. Fail and learn. Wow, this is internet consumer behavior at the best. Why not? You know, <laughs> try certain things with a set of customers because you know they're, they're not going to come back to you again. So sell them junk and then move on to another set of customers. Fail, there learn, very quickly learn not to tap the same customers. It's, it's one of the, it's, it's something that's, uh, that's very revolting in, in, a, in, in the materialistic world today, fail and learn. Why would I not want to get it the first time right? Why would I want to have to fail to learn? Do I have to fail to learn? Because, because, because I've got experience, I'm experienced, I've been experienced, Beautiful. So I have experience behind me, and therefore I'm now going to open myself to failure uh, and acknowledging that failure, because I have that, that's going to build my experience. Somehow, isn't this counterintuitive? What you're looking at is outcome. Anyone makes a million ru ru uh, dollars, rupees, or whatever, you know, becomes really, really successful. What is that? Isn't that an outcome? Or is it the process that leads to the outcome? What is it? It's an outcome. Sometimes we set goals based on outcomes, which is, which is not good. And that's what this program is based on. The program tells us, let's work on a process. Let's identify, let's understand the process. Forget the outcome. Okay, that's what the Gita also talks about. So Empretech is nothing other than, you don't have to get, come to an Empretech program. To understand this, you can read Bhagavad Gita if you like. <laughs> or, 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 or any other spiritual, uh, 
you know, because what it will tell you is kaam karo and thank you. And not to, not to worry about what happens later. That's because in, in this class, for example, this was one class of 100 students, and if I said to myself, I need to come first in class, right? And this is how a typical entrepreneur thinks. An entrepreneur is not going to say, I, I want to come first in class. Uh, but let's understand the fallacy with that. Okay, so if someone says, I want to come first in class, of, of a class of 100, and what do I have to do? I've got to, you know, I've got to really, really work hard. I was working 10 hours uh, a day. Now I'm going to work what, 20 hours a day, you know, 15 hours a day, right? So I'm going to put in that much more effort. So what happens is, say you are coming about uh, 7th, 8th, 10th. Now what happens is you've put in that extra effort and you found you've come last in class. Is that not possible? Is that not possible? You worked 50 times, 50% 50 more than you were working before. And yet, you've come, uh, you've ended up at the bottom. Is that not possible? It's possible. How is it possible? Because others have worked 100% more. It's possible? It's possible? Right? It can happen. So, the, the fallacy of the outcome is that you're constantly measuring your success with respect to where the others are, and that's the trouble. So, even coming first in class is outcome biased as a goal, essentially. So what, what the program, what the Empretech program does is it basically de, uh, well, it de, de nature, de, mm, I'm looking for the word, de, uh, it extracts this, this, this false notion of people that to be successful in society is to measure up to certain societal standards. Is to take that out completely. Completely. And this is what the program did across the last 30 years. And today there are 500,000 entrepreneurs who are part of this program, successful entrepreneurs. I happen to lead the India program. So the government of India requested uh, the Empretech uh, program of the United Nations to come and set up shop in India, which is what I did about 15 years ago. Uh, about 13 years ago is when I came back from Geneva. And uh, now we're in the process of installing this program in the country. It's essentially about promoting uh, a locus of control in each of us. Just saying that it's not the environment, but it's me. And the program is all about and how do you get there. So so you're talking about so why and what is what we've covered. But how do we do this? How do we how do we uh, remove from ourselves this this very sexy notion of coming first in class? How do we remove from ourselves this? What do we do? By trusting in yourself. By trusting in ourselves, looking at ourselves. So this kid, so if, if I were to do this, I would, I would just say, listen, I have gained an understanding of the subject like no other. Okay? I have gained an understanding of the subject. So I'm going to put in effort so that I learn. It's nothing to do with you. Everything's to do with me. Right? So the locus of control comes back to me. So I will put in this effort, and there's going to be a result of that effort. Not an outcome, because outcome can mean 20 other things uh, in the environment, which are beyond my control, will, uh, will, uh, will, will get involved. And that's not in my control. So someone who goes to, to, to the top of Everest, uh, by the way, there's a beautiful series on, uh, series. Yes, series on Netflix, on the Everest, it's uh, around the Kathmandu, you know, on the time when the Kathmandu earthquake happened. Uh, so there were some people, they showed, by hook or by crook, they had to get on top of Everest. There was an earthquake, the base camp had shattered, the tents were all gone, and yet these guys, they were hell-bent on getting on top of Everest because that was the mission. They died. And there were some people who said, hey, listen, this is the journey. The journey is more important than the destination. We've got here, we've got as far as base camp, there's a terrible earthquake. We've been able to see uh, various aspects of, of, of human dimensions uh, in, in all of this. And I think that's, that's been a learning. Right? It's not just about scaling the Everest. It's about the journey. So to an entrepreneur, perhaps the journey is more important than the destination. 
an entrepreneur keeps playing that game. The entrepreneur does not play to win. The entrepreneur plays to sustain the game. So this is this is one of the things that we promote in the you know through this process. We work with almost all institutes of various kinds of institutions in the country. We work with uh, uh, technologists, with the, the IITs, the, the IIFs, and various others. There was one funny problem that I had encountered in one of my internships that I'd done with some some young people at IIF and about. Okay, uh, I don't. I don't it's not a problem because I'm not going to tell you who the student was. Uh, this was about three, four years ago. So we went to a Hindi bazaar and we took the, this was the top, this was the, uh, the second year, meaning these were about to graduate, young people about to graduate, go out to the world. So we took them and we, we got them to find out the problem statements of people who were in a, uh, in a disorganized marketplace. Not disorganized, really self-organized. If you go to Bada Bazaar in Kolkata, you'll find it self-organized. It's, it's hardly disorganized. It's fairly, fairly self-organized. And they went there. There was one kid who said, my father and the Munshi were friends. My father and the Munshi of this establishment were, were very, very thick friends. They, they went back some 20 years. And my father passed away last year. Okay. My father passed away last year, and the Munshi doesn't come on time. The Munshi is always, always, almost always late. The Munshi, uh, when uh, you know, we start at 10 o'clock, the Munshi turns up at 12. And that's my problem statement. So the boy, the young kid who was the cons uh, who was seeking consulting from this uh, chap, <laughs> said, "How do I get the Munshi to come on time?" Okay, that was a problem statement. Yeah, a fairly fairly well articulated statement. I want the Munshi to come on time. So then there were these kids who were working on this and they were using the strategic management and strategic whatever planning and, and human behaviors and all of that. All, the, all of the lessons that they had learned in, uh, in, the, in the institute, they were putting it to work. Someone said, incentivize the Munshi. Huh? Send him a car. Uh, send him, you know, get, get him breakfast. You know, so he'd be incentivized to come for breakfast. So he, you won't lose the morning hours. Let him do that. <laughs> do you th what do you think worked? Do you think any of these worked? So the Munshi would tell the, the, the chap, if, if the chap were to relay to the Munshi, listen, we'll get you an incentive this time. What do you think the Munshi would have said? You know the Munshi? The Munshi is the, fin you know, the, hmm? the finance specialist in a, in a, in a small family-run uh, undertaking. Yes? So what do you think the Munshi would have said? Mujhe mat dikhao. Kaha kya hai, kacha hai, pakka hai, kaha kya hai, mujhe maalum hai. Aapko kuch nahi bata hai. So I'll take what I need. I don't want you to tell me. I don't want you to give me an incentive. I'm aware of my own limitations. I'm also aware of ways that I can uh, help in this organization, process, build up process. So you don't, don't, don't get involved. What do you think really worked? What do you think? And this is perhaps the second important aspect of this program. It, you know, I just thought I'd, I'd relay it as a story because you'd remember that way, rather than putting on the board. So, what do you think? What do you think would have worked with the Munshi? Remember, the boy is about 22, 23 years old, right? And the Munshi is about 60, right? About the same age as his, as his dad, just before he passed away. So now, what do you think he can reliably tell the Munji so the Munji starts coming at time? Yes? Ask him to come two hours early? You don't think he tried that? Sir, please, Apa, I get to look at the bed at the No? No, the time is 10 o'clock. So the morning trading hours in Ahmedabad starts at 10. So 10 o'clock is the time. And Munshi knows it, everyone knows it. He would still come at about 12, sometimes 1, 10 days a day. Okay. So what do you, how do you prevent that from happening? Yes? So he can try his uh, master's, uh, like the Munshi's way only. Like he can also come at... He also comes at uh, 12. Uh, oh, yeah. This is empathetic like mirroring at its best. Wow, guys. That's fantastic. And then the business sinks like a stone. <laughs> right? No more morning hours. We only operate. 
Since the down, so you realize that this is not realize that this is a hardened, but he's about, just imagine a person in the 60s. He doesn't have much, much left in life uh, to, to think about in terms of career building. Okay, he doesn't really want the boys around him. He's got enough in his life. Okay, he was a friend of the father of the business. There's something that is missing. What might that be? His interest in the business. Motivation, yes. How is motivation different from inspiration? Tell him you yes. are the important part of the business. Tell him you are the important part of the business. And, and so? And so? He needs to come. All that you've told me. Thank you very much. My blessings are with you, my son. And I'd love it. I'd love it. I need nothing more to see than the business trying and trying. I've helped your father and now I'm helping you the best I can. Give him more. Change the munshi. Give him more By the way, has anyone tried this? Has it? Do, do, does anyone have a small business at home? You try changing the munshi. Do you think what? What, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen to change the munshi? Munshi hategai me. Munshi is indispensable. What do you do with that munshi? Yes. All right, so I'll tell you what exactly happened. So this was a, a team, a, a, there were about 112 people who were working on this project. Okay, because all the other projects had ended. All the other small businesses that they were looking at in the internship, this was a two, two month, two and a half month process in, in the, in, uh, at IMM in the past. So this is what we did. And then ultimately, so, so almost everyone was helping this boy uh, who was the lead for the project. So one of these boys, uh, I'm, 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 I shouldn't be saying boys, they were, they were an equally distributed of sexes. So one of, one of the students had a, uh, or mentioned to me that he was, uh, he was studying at, at IIM not to get a job with a top consulting firm, but to get back to his father's business. Okay? Because they had a family business, so he wanted to get back. So he shared it with the dad, with his dad. He said, there is a problem here. The internship process is going on with the UN program. And uh, you know, unfortunately, no one's been able to crack it. So help me understand, what do you think I should be doing? Or what, what do you think the boy should be doing there, uh, on the ground? So it's not that it happens. So all you do is just chabi de do usko, punchi ko. Chabi hai do, kar do. Aapka dukaan hai. Aapi ka sab kuch hai. Hum aapko support kar rahe hain. Hum aapse seekhen rahe and this is exactly what happened. It's all, all that he needed. So for a few days, the boy was on time, 10 o'clock, and there was one day when it was raining, so the boy had a, uh, you know, had a chatri, and so the, uh, the, the consultant had actually called him and said, oh, holes in the chatri, look wet, look like a, uh, like a, like a, uh, like a cat, that's, uh, that's that's really really wet. Looked like a almost a drowned, half drowned cat. Okay, looked helpless. And uh, see what happens. So the munshi comes. Maybe they observe each other. And the munshi comes in late. Two hours. Next day also late. Next day late. Next a few days later, the munshi starts coming in time. Perhaps the one thing that the munshi wanted was recognition. Was and, and this was about forty years of work into that family. 40 years, it took 40 years for him, so far as the Munchi is concerned. So empathy becomes important, right? So in, um, in entrepreneurship, I think it's important. These are things that you won't find in a manual. One of, the, one of the things that you actually learn by doing, this is something that Aristotle would tell you, learning is by doing. So Aristotle's idea of heaven, eudaimonia as he called it, and how you get there by practice, emulation and habituation. Find someone, who's demonstrating something that's worth picking up. Not a book, but a person. Because you'll find it, you'll, you'll see it in the flesh. You'll see those behaviors demonstrated in the flesh. And in response to stimuli, which comes from environment. Yes? So all of that, and then you, and you start, start drilling it into your system. So if you, can, if you can practice some of this. By the way, as you move down, I'm going to just check for an example what we've uh, what we've just done. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to 
check on the competence of um, curiosity or perhaps power of observation. Now, as you moved up to this auditorium on the, on the foyer downstairs, you would have seen a clock, a digital clock, red clock. Perhaps you just entered this building. Uh, what's so special about the clock? Is there anything special about the clock? No? Seconds. Say again. The seconds are also there. Okay, very good. What's so special about the clock? I love it. I love it. How many minutes precisely? Three minutes. Two minutes, 30 seconds. Not you. Two minutes, 30. Right? It's two, 30. Yeah. Wonderful. That's part of recognition. That's part of observation. I, I just love this screen. Thank you very, very much. And uh, I'm going to have. Have you taken any questions? That anyone? Because I'm to stop at. Uh, in a few minutes. Happy to take any questions? <coughs> that was brilliant. Good show. So, yes, please. Uh, like, as you said that, the Say again. And please, if you could just speak up and stand up. Speak up and stand up, please. That makes it easier. Thank you. Uh, so, as you initially said that uh, for the Argentina uh, experiment, yes. uh, in the third uh, experiment, most of the people who were chosen who were not well educated. But, uh, I didn't say that. Like, they were I not from the Ivy League colleges, they were mostly community colleges. They didn't come from ranked colleges, they came from community colleges. Yes, that's what I said. Uh, but, yes. sir, uh, but there has been uh, many people who were from the Ivy League colleges and they have uh, stand out in the entrepreneurial uh, journey. So how did that happen in that scenario? I don't know. There's a second thing that I mentioned to you about forgetting the outcomes and fo and focusing on the process. It's perhaps the process that's more important than the outcome. It's possible that they had a process at play. Right? And uh, all you have to do is look into your process. It's look into your roller decks, look into your... And I'll give you a few aspects of it. So imagine... So I used to live in a place called South City till some time back. It's in Jadavpur, and uh, some 19th floor of a, of a 36th floor building. Now, those are fairly tall buildings. But I, I can tell you this, that the first thing that the builder would have done, uh, if the builder wants to go up 36 floors, is to, is to dig down 12 floors, right? To dig down. And the, as part of the process, and you, might, you just want to make mental notes of it, when you get down, when you're looking at uh, uh, activities that happen that other people are not watching, these activities involve systematic planning and monitoring, they involve information seeking, they involve goal setting. Okay. So these are behaviors that you demonstrate that's under the ground. Usually people don't see them. And then when you're building the construction, you may have the structure. The structure comprises things like calculated risk taking, understanding the difference between uncertainty and risk, and all of that. Persistence, commitment. Actually, you know, it, it's taken me about 15 years to understand the difference between persistence and commitment in real terms on the ground. But anyway, so these are behaviors. Then you have a demand for efficiency and quality uh, related to innovation and all of that. Yes. And then you also have something which is really, really important for entrepreneurs, which is to do with opportunity seeking and taking initiatives. So these are all behaviors that you demonstrate above the surface. These are all visible to the world. And once you're done with that, then you have what on top? What do you have on top of a multi-storied building? What do you have? You have uh, an insignia, right? You have, you have something that says, South City, or you have something that says, that, that announces, or that talks about. So in, with, with, with respect to entrepreneurial competencies, we call that a power cluster, a power system of behaviors. And that is to do with independence and self-confidence, and that's to do with persuasion and networking. So these are behaviors that sit on top. And then you have the entire story. So I've given you about 10 competencies. Now all you have to do is to go to UNTAG, the UN website, you can download uh, an entrepreneurship manual, if you like. I can share it with Sir. You can possibly circulate it also, for those interested. 
Professor Tamuji could uh, potentially share this with you. Uh, it's, it's a guide for you. And there are guides on how to write business plans, there are guides on how to write, uh, you know, to, to, to set up a policy presentation deck and all of that. And if, of course, if you want support from the program, we can also look at ways in which we can install the program at our Institute of Management. That's also something we can do. That depends on, on, uh, on how the authorities uh, want to take to this. So uh, that's, that's my talk. And uh, unless there are any questions, uh, I'd be happy to uh, take a leave. Yes? Fine? It's all, it's all ended down with a whimper, no? I mean, it's, it's all low energy stuff. I can, I can actually motivate you. <laughs> and I can, I, can, I can do that. I can dance on stage and I, can, I have a few tricks up my sleeve. I can do that. But remember, it's not motivation that will take you anywhere. It's inspiration. And the only person who will inspire you is not me, but yourself. Thank you very much. <coughs>
the guest speaker and present him with a token of our appreciation. I now call upon Ekta Tomar from MB26 to present the vote of that. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I would like to thank Speaker Mr. Arnold Chakrabarti for taking out such, such a valuable time. And we will believe on the process and all for the entrepreneurship and we'll uh, definitely focus on the, the iceberg you have shown to us. And, and the directors are also the giving the uh, major general case Ranade for providing this opportunity. And our professor Tamoji Turai Ghusar, who is the actually backbone of this entire show. And the EI, uh, CICL, so soon we'll be opening. Whereas uh, I would like to thank the OG management team and the last but not the least, MB25, and my batchmates, MB26. Uh, That's all for today. So, thank you, sir, for coming, giving the great views. And we will give a big round of applause for all of you. And we will be operating such events as possible and the provision from the team that we provide our sir, and the TGS, sir. So, thank you, everyone. I request all the students to remain till the dignitaries leave this auditorium. Yeah. So, please be seated. <laughs> तेरे को उधर काट ले लो फिर मेरे को भगा दे सही है